wholeness and balanced vibrations to everyone out there. Um, I want to make a video about feminism, so that is precisely what I'm going to do. Um, it's been on my heart to make this video for a very long time, uh, but I just had to do more research and, you know, more self-searching, soul-searching, all that type of thing, just to, to really understand the magnetism of what feminism has actually done to our society. Um, I first have to shout out my homegirl, Anaya. She's the one who awakened me to all of the debauchery and the foolishness that goes on behind feminism. Uh, you can definitely find her on Twitter. Her handle is at Gynic Blossom. Uh, Gynic is G-Y-N-I-C. Um, and I'm also going to link her blog because that lady is a genius. <laughs> and I, I have to thank her, infinite thanks to her, because the things that she has helped me to realize about myself as a woman have been priceless. Um, first and foremost, feminism is very dangerous. Like, it destroys societies. Just the, the way that it's put into play, put into practice, is literally detrimental to the whole society. Um, we can look at it just from the, the standpoint that we never even go to look at who started feminism. You know, of course they're going to put women in the forefront and make the woman the face. Like, yes, this woman was tired and she said, I've had enough is enough. And she lit a bra on fire and started feminism. But where did she get the means from? You know, like if we already know that there was a time that women were not working, they did not have any type of economic stronghold. She had to get the funds for such a movement from somewhere. So upon investigation, it's, the very patriarchy that these feminists swear they hate are the ones that have funded the whole entire movement. So if you look around, um, the Rockefellers, they gave a bunch of money to the uh, feminist movement. The Ford Foundation, uh, dude, Hugh Hefner, he gave a whole bunch of money to the feminist foundation. So it's like you have to stop and, and consider like where the support is coming from and then what their ideology was behind their, you know, reasons for support. Now, we can look at it in society. Like, it's clear that they wanted more workers in the workforce. They wanted to tax more people. If you only have men working, you're only taxing half the population. So how are you going to get more tax dollars? Oh, we know. Pull the woman out of the home and get her work too, you know? And then it's just so genius how... The gender roles have been, you know, predicated upon and played against us because then we get in the workforce and it's, oh, well, you're a woman. So, you know, you can only make 70 percent of what a man makes and we're still going to tax you the same. And then it literally becomes slave wages. You know what I'm saying? Like that's slavery, dude. That is outrageous. Um, but it shifted everything into the the favor of the employer. Now the employer is like, oh, well, now I got double the people to choose from. You know what I'm saying? Now I don't even have to compete for the workers. They got to compete for me, you know? So <laughs> that was definitely a, a very interesting aspect that I feel like us women have not considered. Moreover is the fact that when you pull the woman out of the home and into the workforce, the home is shattered. The home goes to shit. I don't care. Because taking care of the home in and of itself is a job, you know. Raising the children, that's a job in and of itself. You know, keeping the the home clean and cooking for the home and making sure that everything is in working order and, and in its true fashion is like a, a woman's like typical gender role. And I think that feminists or feminism has tried to uh, stray us from that. And I hate to take this to a so-called tribal thing, or let's say race, since people like to say race, even though there is no such thing as race. But, uh, you know, for women of my tribe, um, whatever we're calling ourselves today, melanin-rich, melanated, black, whatever, um, we were actually suckered into this because this is not what, this is not our, our agenda. This is not our incentive. Let's just go ahead and say that. So... It was the, you know, the red woman, <laughs> the so-called white woman or whatever. She was the one that was really getting, you know, mistreated in her home. And she wanted some type of equal representation as if to say that women and men are equal. 
but it's like naturally and instinctively like we should all know that men and women are not equal they are complementary so the fight was always like jaded from jump because you're fighting for something that you essentially could never get we're never going to be equal to men and why should we want to be you know like any woman that aspires to be a man lacks ambition period <laughs> so we just have to stop and look like back in the 60s and the 70s like this is the the so-called civil rights movement and all of you know the black men and women they're all like excited to start up their communities they're all getting married they're all getting together they're linking up in unison unison because they understand that you need both parts you need the masculine and the feminine to to build something substantial to actually build the community so that's what we were busy doing you know but then suddenly you know the so-called feminists popped up and said girl ain't you tired of sitting in that house making all them babies and cooking all this damn food that is not uh uh that is not right you can do the same thing that a man does you can go out there and you can work you can get taxed you can do the same thing that he does and more because you are a woman stand up for your rights ha ha rah rah feminism light your bra on fire girl bam so then what do we have you know like then then the the home structure goes to shit and now it falls in big daddy government's lap <laughs> and the government's all like oh well yeah, we'll take care of your kids. Just drop them off over here at school where we'll brainwash them. You know what I'm saying? And, oh, yeah, we'll definitely uh take care of your food situation, too. Here's uh some food stamps for you. So go ahead and buy all this toxic food. Oh, damn. You don't even have a home now because you done kicked the man out because you think that you're the man. Okay, that's cool. We got Section 8 for you. It's like they've generated all of these uh factions that have allowed us to turn our back on our supporters and our foundation builders you know and we have started to look at men as um just aggressors and you know like these crazy you know psychotic men you know that only want us for sex and we're no longer looking at them as our protectors and i feel like that was a genius trick from feminism um but destabilizing the family unit is the the fastest way to tear down the society so we can look around at the society and see how you know the the woman is now playing the man's role and the man is now playing the woman's role you know because they they started up all of these uh like oh this is the woman's uh education this is the woman's studies you know or we give grants to women so that they can go to school so then, you know, these women are saying, yeah, that's right. You know, I want to get educated. I'm going to go to this school and I'm going to get this career. Ha ha, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, the home just deteriorates. And so now there's no community. You know what I'm saying? Because because we all know that like a, a man supports and builds the foundation for the house. But the woman is the one that makes it a home. So that's why we no longer have any homes because the woman is... Is too busy being inverted, turned upside down, doing shit that she has no business in and being, you know, like removed from her her true role because of so-called feminism. So it's like everything got flipped over. Like you can look at divorces, look at divorce rates and, and how it's like the the man gets completely divorced raped in divorce because now we have all of these laws set up thanks to feminism that basically assumes that the man is guilty like off gate the man is the wrong one he's the big bad aggressor and oh you're just a smart smalls a uh, little woman the fragile woman that you know just got treated so bad so wrong relationship so now you want the car the house the kids the dog you want it all <laughs> you know because you're the woman so like think about how much of it and uh, inequality that has really you know raised it's like in the event that feminism screams equality but then everything that it spawns is inequality like it is counterintuitive it, it doesn't make any sense so I have read this one article that actually hurt my feelings like it literally had me in tears about this man who had got divorce raped and he was married to some woman they were married for like 10 years they didn't have a baby until like i think six or seven years into the marriage so she the woman decided one day i guess that she wasn't happy or you know that he wasn't the man that she thought he was and all this other crap you know she wanted to 
go and be a strong, independent woman. So she divorced this nigga. So as a result, um, she divorced him and then she moves like, you know, half across the country or something. So now he couldn't see his kids because, of course, the courts gave the kids to the woman. That's what they, you know, typically do. Thank you, feminism. Then he got hit with child support. So it was like... um. He was already sad and upset, hurt. He couldn't see his son. But then she, you know, was mad at him. Like, oh, you ain't never going to see your son again. Blah, blah, bullshit. Wouldn't even show up to, you know, the custody, uh, you know, what you call it, visitation type of things. Where, you know, they had joint custody where he could see the child. But then she was all like, nah, you know what? I'm a strong, independent woman. Fuck that nigga. So she wouldn't even let him see the baby. So he got to the point where, you know, he was depressed. And so now he oh so much money um to for child support like there's no way that he'll ever be able to pay it you already know plenty of people like that that owe so much money in child support and then there are no you know like adequate jobs for the men because they don't have you know the access to all of the the funding and all the loans and all sort of crap that women now do to get these college uh degrees and then get these higher paying jobs like men have essentially been locked out of that and so now they have this big you know cloud over their head like okay well you still got to pay your child support or else you're an unfit father you ain't shit and uh they get pushed all the way to the back and and then another thing that I read in that article that really hurt my feelings is that the states get federal funding for issuing child support. Like they get matching funding. So every time that they are able to, you know, issue child support, then the federal government is saying, okay, great job. And now they're giving them money. So it becomes like a an economic incentive for the state to issue child support on the man because the federal government is going to pay them for it. Now stop and think about that. You know what I'm saying? Like why why aren't we made aware of this <laughs> first and foremost? But then more importantly, why is that shit okay? And then like there's so much shit that you can't do whenever you have this child support like looming over your head. Now you can't get, you know, a job because jobs don't want to fool with you and your garnishments. Like you can't get a passport. There's like so much shit that you can no longer do because now you have a child support uh hanging over your head whenever all of this could have been avoided if the the woman and the man just came to sit down and say, okay, well, I have this role and you have that role, so let me play this and let you do that, and then we can do this together, and we don't even have to get the government involved, you know? But it's like, I think the the overall incentive or the overall purpose was to get the government so involved that you couldn't get rid of them, you know what I'm saying? Big Daddy government is now here, so it's like, oh, well, you ain't going to eat without us, you know what I'm saying? And you ain't going to get that payment without us, and uh, the bill's still going to be coming around, but without our help, without our assistance, then you're going to be asked out, you know, because you definitely don't want that big, strong, aggressive man and all of his street harassment over there trying to help you. No, men don't help. Men are useless. And I feel like that is what has spawned extremely from feminism, from these people like Oprah, you know, all the way down that make it seem like it's just so cool to be a woman by yourself it's like we get pushed into to the point where we can't even say that we need a man, you know, like especially black women. We're pushed to the point where like we're the strong, independent black woman and then they're making all these songs like, yeah, my woman is independent. She do everything with her damn self. Ha ha. That we can't even say like, wait a minute, I want some help. I actually want a man. You know what I'm saying? Like every other race can say, OK, well, no, I don't want to raise these children alone. I actually want some help. But it's like taboo for the woman especially the black woman to say that now and i think that we only have feminism to thank for that shit you know at the point that that you start all of this uh what i call pussy worship and all this oh yes the woman can do this by herself and look at her go check her out she doesn't need no help she don't need no support well then it's like the us as women because we're so, you know, uh, emotionally driven, we're just saying, yeah, that's right, that feels good, uh-huh, look at all my degrees, yeah, check me out, ha, ha, ha. And now we are essentially demonizing the man, we're we're demonizing masculinity, we sent the, the opposite gender to shit because we're saying, yes, we're better, we're feminine, we're feminists, we are the ones that birth these babies, so we can do whatever the fuck we want, and we don't have no type of responsibility for it because, you know, um, this is equal. <laughs> No, that's not equal at all. Like, 
it sets up like like the the young boys we can look at men right now and realize that men do not have role models because there is no man in the home because we have literally kicked the man out of the home by saying that we do not need him at the point now that we can get better education and better jobs and then more funding from the government than the man ever can get we're saying okay well <laughs> nigga we don't need you all right yeah go do whatever the fuck you gonna do because we don't need you and then the little boys suffer because they don't have a, a a male role to look at and i was reading about that too about how the elite class did that on purpose because whenever you have a man that does not have a role model to to teach him how to be a man he only has these streets the so-called society the bullshit government the media to teach him how to be a man and we all know that they're not teaching men how to be men then the elite class has no threat they don't have any any type of worries because they know that these men are not even trained to actually think like men to actually do whatever it is that men need to do so they're not worried about it you know what i'm saying <laughs> and then it's like whenever you expect the government to be your protector then you don't need the man and you're laughing at the man you're like ha huh, i don't need you you know what i'm saying because i'm getting that check from the government you know what i'm saying and in doing that we have completely and totally locked the man out of his position by depending on a third party faction that didn't help us to to even make these children in the first place you know what i'm saying to even build up this home in the first place so it made a lot of things make a lot of sense because it's like now I understand why men are on these rap songs saying fuck bitches get money because we're the ones that literally said well fuck these niggas I'm about to go get this money first <laughs> we did it first you know um and we are okay with it we think that you know yeah everything is equal now but nothing is equal now because you can look around at the society and realize that that all the cards have been stacked up in the woman's favor and that was on purpose so now you have like one in every four four women on mental health drugs antidepressants and shit because they've been pushed so far out of their gender role that uh you know like life becomes some bullshit to them like i was reading this one article about how women
wholeness and balanced vibrations to everyone out there. Um, I want to make a video about feminism, so that is precisely what I'm going to do. Um, it's been on my heart to make this video for a very long time, uh, but I just had to do more research and, you know, more self-searching, soul-searching, all that type of thing, just to, to really understand the magnetism of what feminism has actually done to our society. Um, I first have to shout out my homegirl, Anaya. She's the one who awakened me to all of the debauchery and the foolishness that goes on behind feminism. Uh, you can definitely find her on Twitter. Her handle is at Gynic Blossom. Uh, Gynic is G-Y-N-I-C. Um, and I'm also going to link her blog because that lady is a genius. <laughs> and it's the very patriarchy that these feminists swear they hate are the ones that have funded the whole entire movement. So if you look around, um, the Rockefellers, they gave a bunch of money to the uh, feminist movement. The Ford Foundation, uh, dude, Hugh Hefner. He gave a whole bunch of money to the Feminist Foundation, so it's like you have to stop in and consider like where the support is coming from and then what their ideology was behind their, you know, reasons for support. Now, we can look at it in society, like it's clear that they wanted more workers in the workforce. They wanted to tax more people. If you only have men working, you're only taxing half the population. So how are you going to get more tax dollars? Oh, we know. Pull the woman out of the home and get her work to you, you know? And then it's just so genius how that's a job in and of itself, you know, keeping the, the home clean and cooking for the home and making sure that everything is in working order and, and in its true fashion is like, uh, a woman's like typical gender role and I think that feminists or feminism has tried to uh, stray us from that <sighs> and I hate to take this to a so-called tribal thing or let's say race since people like to say race even though there is no such thing as race but uh, you know for women of my tribe <laughs> um, whatever we're calling ourselves today melanin rich melanated black whatever um, we were actually suckered into this because this is not what this was not our our agenda this was not our incentive let's just go ahead and say that so it was the you know the red woman <laughs> the so-called white woman or whatever she was the one that was really getting you know mistreated the gender roles have been you know predicated upon and played against us because then we get in the workforce and it's Oh, well, you're a woman, so, you know, you can only make 70% of what a man makes, and we're still going to tax you the same. And then it literally becomes slave wages, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's slavery, dude. That is outrageous. Um, but it shifted everything into the the favor of the employer. Now the employer is like, oh, well, now I got double the people to choose from, you know what I'm saying? Now I don't even have to compete for the workers. They got to compete for me, you know? So... <laughs> That was definitely a, a very interesting aspect that I feel like us women have not considered. Moreover is the fact that when you pull the woman out of the home and into the workforce, the home is shattered. The home goes to shit. I don't care. Because taking care of the home in and of itself is a job, you know? Raising the children. That I, I have to thank her. Infinite thanks to her because... The things that she has helped me to realize about myself as a woman have been priceless. Um, first and foremost, feminism is very dangerous. Like, it destroys societies. Just the, the way that it's put into play, put into practice, is literally detrimental to the whole society. Um, we can look at it just from the the standpoint that we never even go to look at who started feminism you know of course they're going to put women in the forefront and make the woman the face like yes this woman was tired and she said i've had enough is enough and she lit a bra on fire and started feminism but where did she get the means from you know like if we already know that there was a time that women were not working they did not have any type of economic stronghold she had to get the funds for such a movement from somewhere so upon investigation 